rules of exponents, division, and zeros. This is 12.1b, and we're going to talk about first the quotient rule. So we've already talked about the um, exponent of one rule, the product rule, and the power rule, and this is the quotient rule. The quotient rule says that when you divide the same base, you subtract the exponent. So remember with the product rule, when we were multiplying the same base, we added the exponents. Now when we divide the same base, we subtract the exponents. And the answer goes in the position where the larger exponent was located. For example, we have x to the sixth divided by x to the fifth. So we have the same base, so we're going to have the same base for our, our answer, and we're going to subtract the two numbers. 6 minus 5 is 1, and our answer goes where the largest exponent was located. So we have the larger exponent on top in the numerator, so my answer is going to be in the numerator. Um, there's nothing I have to do to show that it's in the numerator. It's understood to be in the numerator when we write it like this. Um, and then, of course, if it's got a 1 for the exponent, we don't need to write it, so my answer would just be x. But here we have the same numbers, a 5 and a 6, so we know when we subtract we get a 1. The only difference is my bigger exponent is in the denominator. So my answer, my x, has to be in the denominator. And the way to show that it's in the denominator is to put a 1 over it. So this would be my answer for this expression. Okay, so number one, we just did this one. Um, so my answer would just be an x. My bigger exponent is in the numerator, so my answer is just x. In number two, we have y to the ninth divided by y to the understood one. So if I subtract one from nine, I get eight, and my answer is going to be in the numerator. So this would just be y to the eighth. Now, just like before, um, when we're dealing with coefficients and exponents, we can't use the same rules for the different um, parts of our monomial. So when we look at this, break it up, pretend like it's, it's separate problems. Let's look at just the big numbers first. So if I were just dividing 20 divided by 5, I would get 4. Now let's look at the y's. y to the 12th divided by y to the fourth, 12 minus four would be eight, and I put my answer where the biggest exponent is. So it's on top, so that would just be y to the eighth power. Okay, same thing here. Let's look at the numbers first, the coefficients first. So I have a negative 24 divided by six. So 24 divided by six is four, so that would be a negative and then a to the fifth divided by a squared. If I subtract 2 from 5, I get 3, and it's going to go on top. So a to the third. Okay, number 5. This is an understood 1, so my bases are the same, so I know I'm going to have a y. And if I subtract 1 from 8, I get 7. So I know it's going to be y to the 7th, but where does it need to go? In the denominator, because my bigger exponent is in the denominator. So to put it in the denominator, I have to put a 1 over it. So it's 1 over y to the 7th. Okay, in number 6, we have a couple of different things going on. We have a's and we have b's. So let's look at them separately. If I look at my a's, a to the fourth divided by a to the understood one, that would give me a to the third. Where does it need to go? On top. Okay, so a to the third on top. Then for my, my b's, I have a b to the seventh and a b to the tenth. If I subtract seven from ten, I get three, so I need a b to the third, but where does it go? On the bottom. So the a to the third was on top, this b to the third goes on the bottom. And that's my answer. Okay, in number seven, 
We've got a lot of things going on here. Okay, let's look at the numbers first. Negative 2 divided by 50. Okay, well, this is 2 over 50, not 50 over 2. So 50 is not being divided by 2. 2 is being divided by 50, and we can't do that. So all we can do with our number, our coefficients, is reduce that. So if I reduce a negative 2 over 50, that reduces to a negative 1 over 25. Okay, then if I look at the x's, this is an x to the 1 over x to the 4th. So if I take away 1 from 4, I get 3, and where does it go? On the bottom, x to the 3rd. Okay, so then for my y's, I have a y to the 3rd and a y to the 1. So that would be y squared, and where does it go? On top. And then I only have this one Z, so I, it stays where it is. I don't move it unless um, I, something happens to make me move it. So I leave it where it's at. So I can, since I have placeholders on top, I can erase that one. Well, I can erase the one um, because I have some other things already on top. So this would be my answer. Okay, number eight has... Um, another operation going on besides just the quotient rule we have the power rule so remember the power rule says when we raise a power to a power we multiply so um, to follow order of operations we have to uh, do the exponent first before we divide okay so to get rid of that um, exponent we need to apply that power rule so we would multiply 2 times 2, that would give me x to the 4th. And then here this is an understood y to the 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, now that the parentheses are gone, I can divide. So I'm going to do the x's, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> first. So if I divide that, I get x to the 3rd. It goes on top because the biggest one's on top. And then if I subtract my y to this my y squared and my y to the fifth, I get y to the third, but it goes on the bottom. All right, this is combining several rules. Okay, so we have parentheses inside of parentheses. So I need to get rid of uh, the parentheses first. So these two, this and this are being multiplied. Okay, so I need to multiply those together first before I can divide. Okay, so if I multiply these two together, 2 times 3, that's 6, a to the third times a. So what do we do whenever we're multiplying bases? We add the exponents. So a to the third times a to the understood one would be a to the fourth. Then b squared times b would be b to the third. Okay, now down here in the denominator, there's a set of parentheses. How do we get rid of those parentheses? We do the power rule. Okay, so um, all of this is being raised to the second power, and when we use the power rule, we multiply. So a to the seventh squared would be a to the fourteenth. And then b squared is just b squared because that's an understood one and one times two is two. Okay, now we can put all of this together. I only have that one coefficient of six, so that just stays where it's at. Then for my a's, I'm going to subtract 4 from 14, and I get a to the 10th. Where does it go? In the denominator, a to the 10th. Okay, then for my b's, b to the 3rd divided by b squared. That would just be a b, and it goes on top. <laughs> All right, so if we have something like this, um, 5 divided by 5. What is 5 divided by 5? It would be 1, right? What is x divided by x? It's just 1. x will go into x one time. 5 will divide into 5 one time. 
Okay, so we know that. So um, if we think about it as far as exponents go, if I have, this is understood to be five to the one power divided by five to the one power, and we said if we're dividing like bases, we subtract the exponents. So this would be the same as five to the one minus one, right? What's one minus one? Zero. So that would be five to the zero. But we already said that five divided by five equals one. So five to the zero power would be one. Okay, same thing with the x's. This is x to the one divided by x to the one, which would be the same thing as x to the one minus one, which is zero. And we've already said that x divided by x equals one. So x to the zero power equals one. Therefore, any base to, to the zero exponent has a value of one. All right, so this is why so now, from now on, you can just trust that anything to the zero power equals one. So here we have five to the zero power. What is that? That's just one. What about x to the zero power? That would be one. Five x in parentheses, that whole thing is being raised to the zero power. So what would that equal? It would just be one. Okay, but what about 5x to the 0 power. It's not 1 because the only thing being raised to the 0 power is the x. It's not in parentheses like number 3 was. So this is the same thing as 5 times x to the 0 power, which is 1. And so this would be 5. Okay, so what about negative x to the 0 power? Since it's all in parentheses, that turned into one. What about number six? Negative x, not in parentheses, to the zero power. That would be negative one, because again, the only thing that's being raised to the zero power is the x. So that turned into a one, and we just brought the negative down. And so we get negative one. So even if it's something that's really complicated, like if we had something like uh, 27x squared y to the fifth z over 3x to the seventh. As if it's all in parentheses raised to the zero power, then it equals 1. So we like that shortcut. <laughs> Anything raised to the zero power is 1.